I am about to introduce Congressman Bob Goodlatte, who is our chair, and he will introduce our speakers. I think he needs no introduction uh, to this group. Um, I will announce that uh, uh, since uh, Rick Voucher is uh, no longer in the Congress, Anna Eshoo has become the new co-chair of the Internet Caucus on the House side, um, Senator Leahy and Senator Thune on the Senate side, and those are our leaders. But uh, before Congressman Goodlatte comes up here, I think that all of us should give a round of applause in honor of Rick Boucher, who really toiled endlessly with an internet vision. And now a man who needs no introduction, Congressman Bob Goodlatte from Virginia. Thank you very much. Well, Jerry, thank you very much, and thank you for those kind words about uh, two of my colleagues, uh, my good friend and neighbor in southwest Virginia, Congressman Rick Boucher, uh, who served uh, the people of Virginia and the uh, country well and ably for 28 years in the Congress and who uh, will go on to do great things and I'm sure that it will encompass work in the technology and internet fields. I'm also delighted that uh, Congresswoman Anna Eshoo has agreed to take uh, Rick's place to be the Democratic co-chair of the uh, Internet Caucus on the House side and uh, she with her work on the Energy and Commerce Committee will bring uh, a great deal to the table for this organization and I want to thank Jerry and Tim Lorden for their great work in uh, keeping the Internet Caucus one of the most vital, one of the most respected, and one of the most busy uh, caucuses of any kind in the entire Congress. We have uh, caucuses for just about everything you can think of, but very few have the kind of outside support that you have provided uh, to the Internet Caucus and the 180 or so senators and House members who work together on technology issues very much appreciate that relationship that we have with you. Uh, I come to it from the perspective, Jerry said I didn't need an introduction, but I'm going to introduce myself a little bit here. Uh, I come to it from the perspective of the Judiciary Committee, and I'll have a few words to say about that before I introduce our other two speakers, but uh, I do want to note that I look very much forward to working with all of you uh, in my new capacity as Chairman of the Intellectual Property Competition and Internet Subcommittee of the Judiciary Committee. We have a uh, aggressive agenda, which we'll be talking to you about uh, at a later time. I just want to mention two of those topics here this afternoon. The way the 112th Congress deals with two technology issues will set the course for the future of the Internet. The first is net neutrality. Most agree that those who provide access to the Internet should not be able to discriminate against certain online content or engage in other anti-competitive behaviors that restrict access to online services. However, there is a fierce debate in Washington on how best to enforce this principle. Some have argued for new regulations from the FCC. However, a one-size-fits-all regulatory approach that gives crucial decision-making authority to bureaucrats is not the way to go. The Internet is too dynamic for that. The Internet must be allowed to grow and innovate and continue to deliver the astounding new products and services that have come to characterize it. If we allow the Internet to be micromanaged by inefficient bureaucracies, there will be unintended consequences, and we will reap them. It is my hope that technology will deliver many solutions to help enforce net neutrality. In addition, I believe that the right approach is a light touch that focuses on punishing anti-competitive behavior, enforcing antitrust laws, and even potentially tweaking those laws to ensure that they still operate as intended in the digital age. I hope to examine this and many other technology-related issues in the Judiciary Committee, and especially in the newly created Subcommittee on Intellectual Property, Competition, and the Internet. The second issue is cybersecurity. Recent attacks on government and private networks have served to increase awareness that cybersecurity is not just about protecting computers, but also has implications for U.S. national security and economic well-being. 
In addition, the online and physical worlds have become so intertwined that vulnerabilities in the information infrastructure now pose very real risks to physical establishments and individuals. One can easily envision a situation where a hacker electronically breaks into critical infrastructure, causes a failure of a physical establishment like a hospital, and causes serious injury or death. Economic damage is also spiking. Already we are hearing increased reports of hackers committing cyber extortion against businesses. Without secure infrastructures, we can expect these types of crimes to continue to escalate. Any plan to secure our critical infrastructures must include cooperation between the public and private sectors. As you are well aware, 90% of the nation's critical infrastructure is owned by the private sector. We need solutions that contain incentives to encourage private sector businesses to adopt best practices and standards to secure their critical information and infrastructures. However, we need to be careful to avoid a static, one-size-fits-all mandate from Washington that is outdated by the time it is finalized. Again, these kinds of heavy-handed mandates almost always carry with them unintended and unpredictable consequences that muddle businesses' ability to find innovative solutions to these problems. In addition to other committees of jurisdiction, the House Judiciary Committee has a key role in creating effective cybersecurity solutions. One idea we need to explore in greater detail is using limited liability protections as incentives for companies to adopt measures to secure their infrastructures and assets, and thus our nation's infrastructure. We used liability protection in other areas like the Y2K legislation, and it has proven an effective incentive. I also believe that there are areas where we can boost our criminal laws to help businesses go after those who hack into their systems and steal their information, recover more damages from offenders, and obtain better information about such attacks. The Judiciary Committee has jurisdiction over liability issues and criminal laws. As a member of the Judiciary Committee's Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security Subcommittee, I am currently working to gather information and ideas about how best to structure legislation utilizing these tools. I encourage you to be in touch with my office with any ideas you have on this topic, and I look forward to working with you on this vital effort. Now I'm pleased to introduce